All righty, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. Hope everybody's having a great trading session. Happy uh, Tuesday to you. Happy, hey, good morning, Bran. Happy to turn around to, to, to turn around Tuesday to you. Um, so uh, I was just looking at the Aussie. Uh, obviously, that Evergrande news is weighing on the Aussie this morning, but I, I don't know. Like, like Steve said earlier on the webinar, you know, it's a lot of it's already kind of given. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I, I don't, I don't know if, um, uh, I don't know if we're going to necessarily uh, trade too much heavier. Um, Hold on real quick. Um, can you hear me? Sorry. Test, test, test. I can, can hear you, you now. Hello. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So, um, anyway, let's, uh, let's talk uh, going back into the Aussie. I, I think that we're, we have a little bit of, um, of, uh, you know, consolidation here ahead of the fed. Um, as Steve mentioned a little bit earlier, I think this is going to be a, you know, this is kind of like a known the whole Evergrande thing. So, uh, we'll see if this can continue to cap. I think it will. So rallies back to, let's call it uh, the highs. 72.85 is resistance. And then support, I'm going to say, is probably this low here. I, I don't know if we're going to get much below that uh, 72.20 today. Hold on really quick. One second, guys. J stand by one second. I'm still here. Yeah, don't worry. We got it. We got it, Blake. Don't worry. We got it. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I was just responding. I come put something real quick. Um, all right. So let's go to the euro dollar. Um, so here's the euro, right? Euro found support at the 117 level. This is my chart of the day yesterday. And I, and I really think that this chart of the day is going to be a pretty... Uh, this. This euro dollar is going to be pretty important. 117, I think, is really critical, um, not only today, but moving forward. And uh, I, I don't have to like rehash out the chart of the day from yesterday, but basically 117, I mean, this, I'll just make it real simple. This is a false breakdown right here. That's a false breakdown. That led to the reversal to back to 119. We came down to 117. The reason why we're holding that horizontal support is because that was a false breakdown. So I expect that to hold. I do not expect us to break 117 between today and tomorrow. All right. Now, um, if we do, that's going to be a really bearish event. I, I would think the only reason, the only way that we break back below 117 today is because the S&P is down three or 4% today. Like if that, happened i'd be like okay stocks are stocks are definitely going you know definitely go, going lower but i don't feel that that's going to be the case pre fomc matter of fact i think more of the risk is in the euro is a bounce back to here and maybe even a little bit higher i, I wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if we you know trade a little higher but this should be 
initial resistance and let's just figure out where other resistance might be rather than just kind of guessing at this stage. So 38% retracement is 117.55, 50% retracement, 117.73. So I'm going to write down 117.55, 117.75, just in case we, we do rally a little bit. This is significant. I do not think that breaks. Matter of fact, if I get an opportunity to buy the euro dollar down here, um, like in the low teens, maybe single digits, I would do it. Like if I could, if I could get long down here, I would. I really think today is just going to be a consolidation ahead to tomorrow. All right, that's that's all I think today is going to be. Um, my my trading is going to be fairly limited. Um, uh, like I stepped in this morning. If you guys aren't in the chat room. Like I stepped in this morning and I and I bought um, dollar Norway, dollar Canadian. You know, I scalped out of the dollar Canadian this morning for like twenty pips, and I got I got out of the uh, the dollar note basically for you know slightly more than break even, but basically break even. So I, I mean, my trading is probably going to be pretty limited limited today, especially after all the volatility we saw yesterday. I um, I think it's a consolidation day ahead of tomorrow, right? So I'm not expecting huge fireworks today. Not like yesterday. Yesterday was a good day. All right. So let's go over to the cable. Um, cable is trading heavy. Well, I tell you what, I'm long the euro sterling still. And uh, I, I think this looks pretty damn bullish i should have i should have added to it i didn't stick out any orders last night but looking at what i'm seeing here it's like that's pretty that's about as basic technical analysis as they get like you know whoever was adding at 85 65 is like duh you know that that was pretty good but the thing is, is we break through this trend line here at these highs uh we should trade back up towards this 86 50 maybe 86 60. i like that but anyway uh that that highlights the weakness of the sterling which i mean you look at the chart here I don't think we break today. Like if you if you're really aggressive, you can probably get long the sterling right here, you know, or the pound. You know, for and wait for that, right? That, I mean, I think that's possible. I, I don't know if I would do it, but I'm just saying that I think that's the risk right now. So resistance is right here, 137.25. Support 136.40 and then 136. Key. 136.40. Okay. Kiwi. Mm. So... I know we got stopped up here, right? But I think this is gonna be more important right there. So that comes in at uh, 70.85 support. I'd say this 50% retracement right here. Okay, so delete that. Resistance 70.85. And support is $69.90. Dollar Canadian. Um, nice bounce. I thought we might get a little bit further here to the 618 at 123.30, but this should hold. These, this is, uh, if looking at this dollar Canadian, this is the range now. 
and we're going to probably be right in the middle of that range um, tomorrow. I'm assuming tomorrow we're going to be around here. So uh, 12735. 129. If we get a little dip down here, I, I want to I, I want to buy it down here. I'm hoping that happens. You know, maybe stocks rip this morning. You know, we rip higher, and that pulls the dollar Canadian down. I, I do want to be a buyer down here right here All right so just letting you guys know matter of fact i'm going to put out an order to do that uh buy the dollar canadian buy at 127.36 i'll have that expire in one day right. so i'm trying to buy Buy some down there if I can get it. All right. Um, dollar Swiss. Big rejection. Uh, we came into the support zone, but I think because yields fell and the dollar yen got crushed, dollar Swiss did too. So let's get rid of this. uh this is going to be important again that's that's that um that should be significant on the way back up so support's going to be right here let's just call it 92 resistance at 92 80. This dollar Norwegian Krona. Um, I, 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 I bought this earlier, as you guys know. I don't mind buying it again. 865 should be support. Now, what I'm surprised about is that we went as high as this. This was a total squeeze yesterday. I knew if we got above 873, we would squeeze. You know, I talked a lot about that. I'm just surprised that it didn't squeeze further. Like I thought we would squeeze high enough to where now every dip is going to be bought. I still think every dip is going to be bought. I just didn't, I didn't think the squeeze was that epic yesterday. So that means that 880 is important. And I'm taking us off bearish. I'm taking that designation off now. The reason why is because coming back above that 873 level, I think this is now proved that it is squeezable. The pair is squeezable now. Kind of like, kind of like, Snuggies, snuggies are squeezable, like, like ketchup bottles. Some of them, ketchup. Oh my god, I have the funniest ketchup story. One day, I'll tell I'll tell you the ketchup story real quick. I, I got to because you just said it. I I have the best ketchup story. Go for it. Gosh dang it. Okay, so I was in Guam, the island of Guam, and I was um I was uh you know one of my days off while I was in the military, and we we were with uh. Uh, the girl that I was dating at that time and, uh, and my, my best buddy, Jason, who lives in Minnesota now and, uh, and the girl he was dating, but they were both friends. Right. So we were like double date, whatever. So we're, um, we're at this bar called Barney's Barney's at the, is it in Tumon Bay and, uh, ordered hamburgers and, uh, both the girls worked at Barney's, but it was their day off. So we were all just sitting there. Like, I think it was like, we had hangovers. We're, remember, we're 21, 22 years old. Uh, hangovers. We're all sitting there. And, um, you know, when a ketchup bottle has been sitting too long and, you know, you, you kind of, you know, those glass ketchup bottles, you, 
you know, you shake it a little bit to get it anyway. So I remember we're sitting there a um, little hungover and um, eating uh, uh, hamburgers just got there, like hamburgers and French fries. And uh, the ketchup bottle, you can tell, has been sitting there for a while. So I wanted to shake it up because the liquid's, you know, a little, little liquid on the top. I didn't want that when I put, pulled out my ketchup. So I uh, shook my wrist. And um, what had happened is the ketchup lid was not tightened. So the ketchup went not oh, no. only oh, no. not only on the two girls that were sitting across from <laughs> us, but then the cap flew. And this is this is serious as crap. The cap flew across the bar, hit the wine glasses <laughs> that were dangling above the ice tray at the bar. Jeez. So it shattered the wine glasses. The wine glasses, the long neck wine glasses fell into the glass or into the ice bin that the bar was using. So not only did I spray ketchup across my girlfriends uh, or my girlfriend and her friend, and then um, the Ooh. ketchup, I mean, it couldn't have been more perfect. Like it shattered probably like two or three wine glasses. You know what? This just... is all nice, but I don't care about the ketchup. Tell us about the girlfriends. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that plural might have might have disclosed some big truth there. Tell okay, us about you want you want to hear something? This is this. I I, I really got to continue this. I got yes. you, know, you guys know I've kind of traveled a lot and I've got some stories. But anyway, you this is the craziest story. So the girl that I dated in Guam, uh, she's half Chamorro, half white. Um, Chamorro is like Asian. It's their local, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I'm my wife is blonde. I, I don't date very many brunettes, but she was like one of the only brunettes in my life that I've ever dated. dated. And because you have kind of limited, you know, whatever uh, choices yeah. when you're on this island. Uh, but she's beautiful and she's, you know, really, really nice, nice lady. And um so, so I'm, I'm dating this girl and, uh, and, and, you know, when I left Guam, it was like, okay, well, you know, it's, it's over because it was pre cell phones. I'm like, well, right. <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever, right. you yeah, know, right. All right, I'll write you, an, you know, write you a letter. But she, but the funny thing is that she was from Arizona. Right. So, oh. uh, the, the, she was half American, half tomorrow. She lived in Guam because her dad lived there. She grew up in Arizona, not far from where I lived, which that's what, that was our connection. Right. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I uh, leave Guam, go back, uh, you know, I meet my wife, have, have a baby, blah, blah, blah. I'm in Dallas uh, years later and uh, I'm, I'm actually working for the wise trade group. And I remember that morning I was, uh, um, it was like six thirty and six six in the morning in Dallas, and I was walking to the office because I was I had the morning edge right, and I'm in my suit tie. We we you know have our the morning edge um, show. That what you're listening to right now it used to actually be broadcasted on satellite TV. On uh, if you had the Dish Network, it, we were like f f channel four hundred and two or something like that, right? And um, and I remember I was walking to the studio uh, in my suit and tie. And, you know, I was just, you know, I was just like uh, listening to CNBC. We had it on, uh, I had it on blue, Bluetooth Sirius, you know, so I could hear it on the way into work. So I could hear what's happening in the markets as I was driving. Right. And I remember walking through the parking garage and I get a call from my sister, uh, stepsister, my step stepsister. She calls me up. She goes, Hey, Blake. And I'm like, Hey, oh, Hey, Nikki, what are you doing? And she's like, uh, I'm like, it's so early in the morning. Why are you calling me? And she goes, Hey, um, did you, uh, 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 date, um, or did you know a girl in Guam? And oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm blinking her name right now. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, she just came here with a baby. She says, no, she's, no, no. She goes, <laughs> you know, she's now she's in Arizona and, and, and I'm as I'm in, you know, Dallas and I've got, you know, I'm married. I have, my first son is already born. Um, 
Garrido is her last name. I'm trying to think of her first name. Anyway, she's like, uh, she goes, do you know? Oh, Leona. She goes, you know, Leona. And did you date a girl named Leona in Guam? I'm like, yeah. Why would you ask me that? She goes, oh my God. Uh, she's sitting right next to me. She works for me. She, <laughs> Cause my, my sister was a CFO for a, a construction company and <laughs> she, goes, she sits right next to me. She works for us. And I'm like, what? And then uh, she put her on the phone. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so this girl that I dated in Guam that I spilled the ketchup over. Wow. She worked for my stepsister in Arizona. She moved back. And uh, yeah, so, and, and that was like at the beginning of Facebook. And she had like, she has, she married and three kids. And, uh, but it was so, such a small world. Isn't that weird? Smallest it world. It is actually. It is. Yeah, yes. it's so weird. Anyway, um, 38% retracement in the dollar max held. Uh, it is right here at uh, 2006. So if this holds, this is bullish. That means that's going to put us back up at these highs. Just letting you guys know. Um, I would assume we're going to be doing something like this today, but that's just an assumption. So 2006 and then 20. 20. Yeah, isn't that weird? <laughs> I just thought it's the weirdest thing. 2006. And then yesterday we held at uh, the um, 618 is 2022. We came just shy of that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put 2022 anyway. Uh, let me put the zeros in here. Sorry guys, I'm gonna finish this up right now. Um dollar yen. Uh, 109.10. Uh, I don't know how to trade the dollar yen. I really don't. So I would That's assume. The club. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, God, what a mess, right? Like, how how do you make two cents of all that? I I I mean, I don't even know what to do here. I would assume. Let's just do this. How about that? We're going to do this. This is all we care about right now. That's it. And I bet you by tomorrow, we're sitting right here. <laughs> just, just enough to piss off everybody, right? Be so far from either end that if you're stuck long or short, you're just kind of screwed. So 109, 10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-10-10, 1-
We are now bearish. Um, support today should be 43.50, then 43.00. I doubt we get there today. We'd be lucky if we get to 43.50, but you have to focus on downside now, in my opinion. Um, you, uh, gold and silver. Gold resistance at 1780. Support. 1735. And I'm just going to tell you guys this. Oops, 1780. I'm going to tell you guys this. Come Thursday, this is going to, these are going to be flipping colors. Just so you guys know, we're, we're going to, it may all say range right now. That will all change come Thursday morning. Brand says dollar yen is like, well, understanding Japanese. <laughs> That's a good point. Yes. Silver. Silver is um, still trading like crap. It really is. Uh, 23 is resistance. Well, 23.35 and then support at 22. So I'm telling you, after, uh, after Wednesday, all this stuff that's range is going to be changed. Bitcoin, that Ethereum, that move yesterday really, really, really ticked me off. I cannot believe that. I am basically, I own Ethereum. I owned Ethereum at current prices and I got stopped out last night. That was just absolute horse crap. Um, support here at 40,000, basically. So 42.5 was big before, right? So 40,000 now, and then 42,500. Because remember 42,500, how big this was right here, if you guys don't recall. I think we wrote that number down for pretty much every day for a couple of months or you know, a few weeks through here. It's important now. And... We probably shouldn't see back above, I would say maybe 45,000 now, roughly. It's not great resistance, but I don't think we're going to see above that. Not today. Um, not unless it's some headline driven move. All right. So there's your bias chart. It's finished. Sorry, guys. I had to tell the catch up story. You made me say the ketchup story. You just wanted to brag about your girlfriends. Come no, on. no, it was your really. Girlfriends. I mean, really, nothing to nothing to brag about. But it was. Uh, your, it was, your, it was con a, your your uh, con concurrent girlfriends. Come on. Uh, the the <laughs> the amazing. Uh, I I I can't really explain to you how crazy it was because you should have seen the distance that the 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 uh, ketchup bottle <laughs> uh, cap flew and broke. I mean, you it did. couldn't have been a more perfect shot. And the, tell us though what happened. I mean, how, how did everybody react? Oh, the bartender was extremely irritated. But remember that those girls worked there. So, and yeah. the, we laughed it off after the initial like shock factor. Like, like I, I mean, everybody's mouths like basically hit the floor. It was funny though. I mean, and I and and like like I said, luckily uh, they worked at the bar, so it was no, it wasn't like if that would have happened at any other place, uh, I probably would have had to cuff up somebody. I would assume because it that I mean all the glass dropped in the ice bin that they used, <laughs> but it was it was early in the day, you know, it was like I don't know noon or eleven or something. So um, they had to clean out the complete. They had to complete completely clean out the ice bin because there was glass there's broken glass in it so anyway it's, it's, it's great raj says remember dumb and dumber uh i was my dumber dumb and dumber moment probably <laughs> so <laughs> anyway all right guys i'm gonna go i i'm gonna i gotta go feed the uh feed the troops around here um good luck today trade save steve and stelius are gonna take you right now 
uh, I think we're going to do a lot of consolidation. So good luck. All right. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Well, it's, it seems that uh, ahead of the Fed now, we're kind of forgetting uh, ever grand or we think maybe the situation will be contained. We've got risk on today. So um, reversing in quite a few instruments. Equities are up 1%. Cryptos are up a couple. Even the gold and silver are up. Um, yeah, even in, in, people... in the face of uh, potential tapering. A lot yeah. of people, what? Yeah, a lot of people are uh, putting their hopes again, you know, yes. that central bank uh, wording, etc., is going to save the day. Yeah. Well, I think I think that uh, Powell is going to err on the side of uh, dovishness. I said that sure. on face as well. Uh, I'll be surprised if it doesn't, especially with everything that's happening now. I mean, they have the perfect uh, opportunity to not to not to say something groundbreaking, but just not to give too much away and just to keep a um, um, you know a little bit. Um, you know, hold back a little bit, just a little bit. Anyway, I think that's what's going to happen. Let's see. Um, our friend Chad says, nice, open on the URA ETF. Remember, we're looking at that. Yes, got long at 2380 and it's 2470 now. So, I'll, you know, I'm tempted to take 4% profits in a day, but I'm, I'm just going to run it for now with my stop at break even and who cares? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, against yesterday's lows. Yes, it is. It is a good uh, trade, even yeah. if this is a corrective rebound and there is another leg to the bigger correction here, you, you might still be able to squeeze even more towards like 20, 25 and a half, 26. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might be trailing my stop, but at the moment, you know, it's up 4%. I've moved my stop break even and, you know, move to the next trade basically. Yeah, but um, nice. but uh, yeah, yeah, you're lucky when it happens. Um but otherwise, yields are actually not doing much. You know, 10-year US is up to 131, 32, so a couple of base points. So really, until the Fed tomorrow, we're going to be um, grinding. And, um, you know, we wait for power. So um, that's going to be the main event. They really event. destroyed the bond market. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is not a market anymore. It's... I mean, the, during si, since COVID, the inactivity in the yields market, in the bond market, in comparison to what has been happening, I mean, nobody would have guessed if you just showed them the bonds, what has yes. transpired during the past, like, one and a half years, right? Nobody. Yeah. It's, 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 it's funny ridiculous. because in, in the past, what is it, four or five years, uh, I have friends who ask me, oh, I have this money on the side. What can I do with it? My first response is, you do not touch bonds, any bonds, you know, because the bonds that yield you something, you're taking stupid risk. And I just don't like that at all. And mm -hmm. the, the bonds which are relatively safe, if you're, if you're lucky, they're not going to be negative. So yeah. if just, you're lucky. <laughs> they've, destroyed, they've destroyed the bond market. I'm, I'm, and I'm talking about in terms of retail um, people investing in bonds. They've just yeah, destroyed completely. it. Uh, it's ta they've taken out one major asset class from the world, basically, which is, I, I don't know, you know, it's obviously and, good for governments and corporates to be able to borrow at these rates, but yeah. Anyway. And through that, uh, they've, um, in essence, uh, messed up several markets because of, you know, the usual correlations and opportunity cost, of course, between markets. So, you know, once you... Uh, once you, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Once you poison one market that important like this one, you know, there is spillovers everywhere. So, yeah, that's one of the main reasons, for example, why we've, we've been having this massive, massive uptrend in equities since uh, the previous financial crisis. In any case, yeah. uh, anything else, Tal? No, that's it. I mean, it's all about tomorrow. So we're reversing today, but uh, really, I'm not paying attention to anything before tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, not coincidental, in my opinion. Um, this 43.52 level, which was the previous low that we had at that micro correction over there, held... Um, I mean, we did trade through it intraday, but we did close exactly at this level. And today we opened pre-market at this level and just 
kept moving higher. So um, there was nobody brave enough to push the index to produce a lower low ahead of the Fed. And they totally understand that, right? So we've now uh, accomplished the first objective having to do with uh, a bearish turn, which is we've broken and closed comfortably and for two consecutive days uh, below the ascending wedge. But we haven't managed to break through the uh, previous low and ahead of the Fed, I think it's pretty unlikely we're going to do so. Now, the question is, technically speaking, what is the likely direction from here, right? And if you look at the short term chart, we're currently uh, stalling at the 38.2 of uh, this move lower. In my opinion, it is likely that we're going to see a little bit more upside at least. And then everything is going to be up to the Fed. Are we going to be doing this? Or are we going to be doing that? Right? And I can't guess in advance what's going to happen. Of course, I totally agree with Stelios and his point of view. Uh, about the Fed likely finding this as a wonderful excuse uh, to push back tapering because we, we know that they don't want to do anything like that. And even if they do, we know very, very well um, that uh, no matter what happens, I, at least I'm confident about it. Uh, in my opinion, tapering is never going to end, meaning it's a process that they might put in motion once again, as they did the previous time uh, when they started sinking the balance sheets. But in my opinion, they're, they're never going to go through with it. They're never, they'll never manage to, uh, to you know, take it from slowly tapering to having zero QE. Uh, I think we're going to go back to increasing QE before we take QE down to zero. Um, in any case, so, uh, you know, important resistance here, 4450. I think as long as we trade below 4450, you can try being in the short side. And, you know, the same applies, of course. I, I've told you before, I use the S&P as the barometer for risk. But that doesn't mean that... Uh, you know, other indices, uh, you know, are not playing out more or less with the same type of scenario, right? So here's the NASDAQ um, rebounding exactly as the S&P. We uh, probed the 88.6% uh, FIB yesterday from that last move higher. Uh, we're now testing resistance here, this horizontal support resistance area, you can see roughly at 15,200. Uh, we can also extend this formation and look for the previous trend line support, perhaps acting as resistance. There you go. Um, and what happens here is all dependent on what we get from the Fed. This or that, right? Uh, the IWM, there's nothing to say about the IWM. Uh, we've had this conversation on face as well. In my opinion, this is somewhat likelier to be uh, a consolidation and not a dis distribution. They ask the question, is this a consolidation or a distrib distribution? Yes, indeed, it can be either. Uh, but in my opinion, it is somewhat more likely to be a consolidation before we break higher. Of course, it doesn't really matter uh, what my assumption is simply because in any case, I'm not advocating that anybody should try to trade this unless we break out one direction or the other, right? The trend lines are very, very clear. Uh, once we break in uh, either direction, uh, I think the chances of seeing follow through are very, very high considering the uh, long period of time we've already spent consolidating here, right? I mean, we've been consolidating here since middle of January, and we've currently passed the middle of September, right? So this is a very prolonged consolidation, and no matter which direction we break through, in my opinion, we're, you know, we're going to have a very decent follow through. So even if we break lower, don't try to fade it. I think it's a very likely scenario that. 
um, you know, we're going to at least fulfill the minimum expectations in that case would be an extension of the width of this uh, formation. Now we break higher, given the prior trend as well, you know, don't try to fade this uh, also. In my opinion, we break higher. We're going to be pushing towards 250 at the very least, probably even higher than that. Now, having to do with other um, assets, nothing super major has happened today. There is, before I go to metals, etc., there is one, um, one currency pair I was looking at earlier today, and that was the CAD yen, and I'll explain why. Because the CAD yen is actually currently on top of, you know, a very important support area, right? You can see it here, right? Previous lows, multiple times tested there. Uh, roughly this area, 85, 85, 20. Major support, we break through that. We open the door for more downside. Uh, but as long as we're not, um, you know, CAD yen looks you know, very, very healthy. Of course, even if we break lower, I will still think that this is some kind of a corrective pattern, but one that's going to take us, you know, deeper, perhaps, for example, you know, towards this channel or whatever. But in any case, this area that we're currently testing is important. So, you know, if you like it to the long side, you might even want from a risk world perspective to try the uh, long side from, you know, where we currently are. Now, Clearly, um, if you're looking for direction uh, in the yen pairs from the side of the USD yen and that component, uh, you have to be cognizant of the fact, we've said it many times, we've got rejected again and again and again from this channel, right? And I do understand that the price action, if you zoom into shorter term time frames, looks very choppy. Um, and it's not easy to determine a short term, a very short term support. That's why I haven't even uh, attempted to do so. I'm just looking at this channel and yes, there is clearly a lot more room to the downside as long as we trade within it uh, than to the upside, right? Because we are much closer to resistance. So from that perspective, you know, USD yen looks like it's easier to push lower uh, then higher as long as we uh, keep bouncing, uh, so, sorry, keep um, uh, getting rejected, keep um, um, uh, finding it tough to crack through this uh, resistance trend line, right? So if indeed the USD yen uh, being unable to punch through uh, finally succumbs to the pressure and pulls back further towards like 108, then yeah, there is. It is more or less a given that the yen pairs are going to suffer more. And speaking of the yen pairs, there was one more yen pair I wanted to talk about, and that is the pound yen. And why is that? That is because the pound yen is uh, currently trading. It closed slightly below it yesterday and it's trading slightly below it as we speak, the 200 daily moving average. But at the same time, we're also now trading below this channel strand line support, right? And this uh, depends on how we close today, opens the door also for a deeper corrective move here in pound yen. So pound yen seems to be trying to break down. CAD yen is very, very close on top of, you know, a pivot support area. So I think these two are uh, worth paying attention to intraday. Uh, for those of you that want to trade, you know, shorter term as well, I think, you know, we might have developments with them uh, within the day. Uh, what else? Yeah, having to do with metals. Um, oh, having to do with USD knock because I, I mentioned it yesterday. If you remember, I made it very, very clear that in order for me to even consider cha changing anything here, I, I would need to see a daily close above this 872, 875 area. That did not happen yesterday. So in my opinion, nothing has changed here. Having to do with the metals, um, a little bit of a, of a recovery, both in gold from the 61.8, by the way, keep that in mind. We 
saw this FIB uh, yesterday. So gold rebound, rebounding from the 61.8 of the last move higher. Here is silver. Clear divergence here, uh, divergence here in silver, right? We tagged the previous spike low, while gold, you can see the big divergence, right? Gold, a very clear higher low. I mean, we barely made it to the 61.8. Uh, while silver retested the previous low, right? So a big divergence in favor uh, of gold in this case. Um, so clearly gold under current circumstances overperforming, which is to be expected in risk of conditions since silver is more of a hybrid metal, right? I mean, it is, let's say a hybrid between a monetary metal and an industrial metal mostly, right? Um, so it it takes cues both from um, growth factors and concerns, uh, and uh, you know from anything that has to do with the monetary system, inflation, etc. In the case of gold, it's more straightforward. Its its main function is mostly of a monetary metal. So in, uh, <clears throat> in periods of risk off, uh, in general, you should always expect gold to do better uh, than silver. Or uh, there is no absolute, but you know, in the vast majority of the cases, you should expect gold to overperform silver under such conditions. Now, uh, you might have noticed that platinum has a very good day here, um, back at 9.50 previous support area. Let's see if it's going to act as resistance again. Of course, one day doesn't do, uh, doesn't make a trade, uh, a trend, sorry, or whatever Shakespeare would say in this case. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's quite interesting that we have a 4% update for the time being. Of course, in order for me to technically start looking higher, the RSI divergence is not enough. One good day, if that even happens, right? Because yeah, are we 4% higher on the day? We are, but it's early in the day. I mean, it's not gonna be the first time that I will have seen you know, a very good performance intraday becoming uh, a bad close or the exact opposite, right? A day that's starting very negatively. Um, uh, completely changing and having a positive close. So, you know, I've seen both happen. So um, in any case, technically speaking, to start being bullish here, we need to see a break above this descending channel strand line resistance. And that currently passes from a little bit higher than 1000. So 1010 or something like that. Uh, palladium, a little bit of a recovery, but in my opinion, this looks the weakest. Uh, notice how we've sliced through the corrective channel, right? I'm, I'm leaving this channel up because it gives you uh, always a good idea of when something can be considered a correction and when not. So I do think that pallad palladium has clearly entered the uh, sell the rip mode instead of buying the dip mode until you know something different happens. So keep that in mind. Cryptocurrencies not doing much for their standards today, so not much to mention there. Now having to do with crude oil, crude oil has stabilized, uh, still trading above the broken channels, trend line resistance. And as I've told you yesterday and nothing has changed, yes, it makes sense to see a pullback when conditions are uh, switched to risk off, but so far crude oil has done nothing wrong or nothing that would uh, get me bearish. Okay, so keep that in mind. And, you know, we switched to risk on following the Fed. And guess what? Uh, there is a very good likelihood that crude oil is just going to uh, start climbing higher once again. Now, natural gas has sliced through this channel and correcting lower, a very normal, very healthy, behavior, um, you know, uh, next downside target towards 455. Let's leave this corrective pattern unfold. At some point, it's going to find a low 
in my opinion, not into the distant future, but more more likely, um, rather shortly, and then it's going to be a buying opportunity again. But for the time being, let it do what it's doing. In my opinion, uh, probably this corrective move has more uh, to go. So I wouldn't be, uh, you know, buying natural gas like immediately, right here, right now. Uh, Dimitris is asking about the Aussie cat and the Kiwi cat. Yes, absolutely, Dimitri. I'll be more than happy to have a look at them. I haven't had a look at them in quite some time, although from what you see, not very much has changed. All right, not very much has changed. We've seen this choppy price action continuing here in Aussie CAD still in some kind of a move lower, but the characteristics of this move are clearly, clearly not impulsive. Um, let's see what's happening here. So first of all, let's do some redrawing and some fibs. So let's pull this all the way down there. Let's see how much we've retraced. Okay, close to 50%. Uh, as I said, the manner is not impulsive. Let's see if Let's take this off for now. Now, this here is the bullish case scenario for Ozikad, this one. All right, this descending wedge with clear resistance now being here at this congestion of previous highs, right? let's say 0 0.94. So, for the time being, I think I would be more inclined to be bullish here cautiously for the time being. Okay, cautiously. Still no solid hard evidence that we found, you know, the low of this move. Uh, but doesn't look that bad. But it doesn't look that bad. Now, having to do with KiwiCAD, you'll notice that it looks a lot healthier. Right. So we've broken through this triangle and we seem to be developing some kind of a bull flag here. And the price action from the lows seems more convincing. So between the two of them, clearly Kiwi CAD looks better, right? Because the Kiwi has been overperforming the Aussie clearly. I would say cautiously bullish in both counts, Aussie CAD and Kiwi CAD. Short term, especially looking at the chart, focusing more in the short term, definitely bullish. So if I had to trade them like shorter term, I don't see the best case scenario in the short term. Right, for sure I don't. Uh, what do we think about cryptos? Now, uh, you know the plural here. It doesn't make me. It doesn't make me. It doesn't make it easy for me to answer because we have diverse opinions in the team having to do with cryptos. I will give you my technical opinion about cryptos, and my technical opinion was and is uh, that these price action here and here was corrective and that we would break lower and 
produce at least one more low. Now, the question is, are we done? Because we've already satisfied that minimum expectation that I had, that this was a corrective pattern in the first leg lower, and that should produce at least one more leg lower. And we did see that. We, see, we saw a lower low in both cases, both in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Are we done? Unfortunately, a big part in the decision uh, of the market to move higher here, uh, uh, higher or lower from here, is going to be on the Fed. Because as I've explained before, cryptocurrencies are like the riskiest of risk assets. And if, let's say, the Fed somehow disappoints and the market goes back in risk of mood, following the Fed because it didn't get what it was expecting or, for example, because uh, some people have started pricing in that given the Chinese uh, developments, uh, the Fed might be, the market might have repriced, for example, how dovish the Fed might be and the market, let's say, let's say the Fed decides not to take, uh, not to take it yet into consideration because it's too early or they're not worried, the market might be disappointed and we might go immediately back in risk of mode. And if that indeed happens and we go back in risk of mode following the Fed, you should definitely, definitely expect Bitcoin and Ethereum to continue lower uh, and push even lower. Having to do with shorter term object objectives, in my opinion, 42,500 is an important support area for uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin was trading uh, a lot lower earlier on the day, but it has now pulled back above the 42,500. So uh, today's daily close is going to be important. <clears throat> and the exact same thing can be said about Ethereum and the 2,900 level. So, you know, speaking shorter term, uh, I think you should first focus on these two levels having to do with Bitcoin and Ethereum. You are interested in the e uh, ETH uh, Bitcoin ratio. Okay, uh, sure. Let me th think about it. Do I want to look at it as an ET Ethereum to Bitcoin ratio or Bitcoin to Ethereum ratio? I think I'd rather go with BTC e ETH. Oops. Let me guess, it's bottoming out because Ethereum was overperforming massively and now it's, oh, ETH, okay. He wants the other way. So basically that's, that's yeah, probably it's gonna topping, be the topping but... out. It's probably topping out now. Uh, isn't there such a ticker here? Okay, even if there isn't, we, we can we can create that one. That's not yeah, a problem. Yeah, USD divided BTC, by BTC. BTC, USD. It's the other way, the other way around he wants it. BTC. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to keep it yeah, on my chart, so I'll do it this and uh, like this and... Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it seems to be... Oh, seems to be bottoming a little bit. I don't know. Hmm. So this is a strong move lower in favor of Ethereum, obviously, as you understand. But which trend line do I care more about? I think I care about this one first. It's a channel, isn't it? More or less. That's, that's what I'm I'm planning to check. Yeah, more or less. Yes. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Sure. Given term. that it's cryptos, I think it's uh, it's close enough. Yep. I would agree. For the time being, this remains bearish for the time being. So for the time being, definitely no evidence that we're not still working in favor of Ethereum, right? This is a rather big, big move from 62 down to 12. Big, big move. And there is no technical evidence to suggest that the move is over. Even this little rebound over here completely lacks an impulsive characteristics. So I would have to say that for the time being, 
Ethereum still looks technically better than uh, Bitcoin does. Jane says that Ethereum to Bitcoin reflects uh, in general how altcoins are performing. Yeah, I don't find that hard to believe. I, uh, it, it totally makes sense, Jane. It totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Uh, also, to connect the two previous conversations, the one that has to do with the ratio of Ethereum and Bitcoin and the other one that has to do of how I expect cryptos to do. And I, then I went immediately ahead and explained that in my opinion, you should not underestimate their extremely high correlation with risk assets when risk assets are selling off. So they might not be that well correlated uh, when uh, you know we remain in this slow choppy risk on environment that indices for example are grinding um, steadily higher so uh, during that period you know correlation might not be that well but in my opinion you should expect correlation to be very very good in risk of uh, days and in the vast majority of the cases, you should expect cryptocurrencies to be a high beta play uh, in, in, in this case, when we have risk off. So you, 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 you could easily expect Bitcoin, Ethereum and the rest to, to be doing much worse and selling off a lot more than indices when we have risk of, uh, a risk of environment. Okay, so to connect the two of them, now, uh, let me remind you that Bitcoin has proved that within the tight crypto community acts like a blue chip type of stock. So very frequently when cryptocurrencies are selling off in tandem, uh, Bitcoin tends to do less bad than altcoins because a lot of the people that hold altcoins don't want to get out of the crypto world environment so they switch to bitcoin so bottom line having to do with the eth bitcoin ratio if following the fed we go back in risk of mode and we keep on pushing lower in my opinion, there is a very good chance that cryptocurrencies are going to do the same and at a bigger extent. And in that case, you should probably expect Bitcoin uh, to overperform Ethereum. It is very likely. So you might see, um, if we're talking now about um, uh, the Bitcoin to Ethereum ratio, right? You might see a bigger rebound than the one we currently have. But if that's not the case, if we don't go in a risk of environment, etc., there is, you know, it is very likely that Ethereum, uh, given the chart, is going to continue to overperform Bitcoin. Technically speaking, it looks uh, like that downtrend in the ratio is well established. And as I said, there is nothing wrong happening with it. Do you think it's healthier to check this ratio with DXY? Uh, which ratio with the DXY? How to you mean the Bitcoin Ethereum ratio with the DXY? I mean to over you mean to overlay them? Yeah, but how how to check them? Let me see what you posted. Sorry, I don't see a reliable correlation here. I, I mean, I went back to the chart, looked at it. I see periods that the correlation in, is inverse and I see periods that correlation seems to be positive. Uh, so in my opinion, it's, um, it, it's pointless. Uh, at least that's what I get from looking at this chart. Uh, in my opinion, it's of, of no value. Uh, uh, yes, it has some clear periods of inverse correlation, but if you notice, it has also some periods of 
um, that correlation is positive, right? Like late, lately, for example, lately the correlation seems to be more or less positive. So I think it's, you know, uh, yeah, unless a correlation is like super obvious, in my opinion, you shouldn't take it that much into account when, when trading. In general, correlation, since many times they can change or whatever, should not be like your first, um, you know, indicator in doing anything. But in this case, I would just, you know, let it be. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, I think we've already extended our usual uh, duration for the webinar. So um, I'm not expecting fireworks today. You know, um, I mean, you know, pre-fed. Um, so bottom line, I wish you all a, um, a nice rest of the day. And we talk again tomorrow. Bye -bye. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye still.